Friendly and true, you're welcome to stay, to sup and to drink, any time of the day. Strong in the arms, strong in the head, black country born and black country bred. Strong in the arms, strong in the head, black country born and black country bred. So from Brian and Dolly, from Ali and Ray, we send you a greeting upon this day. From John and young Tom, a message we give, good black country cheer, long may you live. Strong in the arms, strong in the head, black country born and black country bred. Strong in the arms, strong in the head, black country born and black country bred. Black country born and black country bread. Black country born, black country bred. Strong in the home, strong in the head. So you say in the black country, strong in the yed. Welcome to Black Country Night Out. A mixture of black country songs and humour from a region that has a language all its own. Words like, he's a railian. Or he's a boster. Simply means, he's a good one. Words that may describe our first artist tonight. From a little town in the black country, a man who raised his first laugh from the very moment he was born in the maternity hospital. <laughs> The midwife laughed, the nurses laughed, and it's been like that all the way through. Star of the Black Country Night Out Show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tommy Munden. <laughs> lovely, thank you very much indeed. What a lovely ladies in the audience, are. particularly these two lovely girls over here. And I'm sure they're sisters, yes? Uh, what happened to Cinderella? <laughs> just a few news items, ladies and gentlemen, just to sort of let you know what's been going on in the world. It seems that the Conservative government have found a way of contracting the unemployment situation. They've rolled a school even aged to 47. Margaret Thatcher left tonight on a tour of friendly countries. She's expected back first thing in the morning. <laughs> I also am pleased him looking for a tall, handsome man for raping women. If the money's good, I might apply for the job myself. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Thieves broke into Worcester police station and pinched all the toilets. And up to now, the police have got nothing to go on. A farmer in Worcester, he's just crossed a hen with a banjo and he's now got a chicken that plucks itself. <laughs> One of the things, ladies and gentlemen, that a comic has to do, he's got to try and suit everybody's sense of humour, because after all, everybody's sense of humour differs. What makes them laugh in America, don't make them laugh in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> what makes Tony Ben laugh, don't make Martin Foot laugh, you know, that's how it goes. So I have to try and suit everybody's sense of humour, and I think the little gags that don't tax the brain, Always be down the best. You know, the ones you don't have to think about. Like the one about the eight-foot nun who kept all the monks on the toes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the chap knocks on the door, he says, uh, I'm from Licklewoods. The block says, great, he says, how much have I worn in the block? Well, I've got some bad news. He was just cast your wife shoplifting. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Then there's the one about the plastic surgeon who fell asleep in front of the fire and melted. <laughs> but I love these little doctor jokes because I got a lovely doctor. He was some lovely doctor jokes. He had a good doctor. I can call him a good doctor because he's one of these sort of doctors who says, no matter what the trouble is, he always says, sleep with the window open. Because when he ain't in the surgery, he goes, ah, Birdlin, bloody hours at night. I was a crafty bugger, but. Um... <laughs> Did... Chap walked in and said, Doctor, you know that stuff. You gave me to keep his strength up, so I can't get the top off the bottle. <laughs> Chap walked in and said, Doctor, I'm having a little trouble with my bowel. 
And the doctor said, well, are you regular? The doctor said, every morning at half past six, never miss. And the doctor said, what's the trouble? He said, I'll get up till nine. <laughs> Chap well, this is doctor, I broke my neck and I said, keep it chin up. <laughs> now, no matter what audience you work, ladies and gentlemen, you can always find that there's somebody in the audience that's religious. <laughs> You've got to cater for them. And this reminds me when Noah builds the ark. It's all the animals into the ark, and he said, now look, he said, I don't know how long these rains are going to last. We've certainly got no room for breeding, he said. So I'd like all the male of the species to hand in your organs and I'll give you a titty for them. <laughs> forty days and forty nights pass and the long-awaited dove arrived with a tweak to show that the rain had ceased. This little mouse has been waiting his chance after forty days and forty nights. Because <laughs> running over to his missus, I'm going to make love to you, he says. He was a black country mouse, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> he says, I'm going to make love to you like you've never been made love to before. And his wife says, oh, really? What's new? He says, I've got the elephant's ticket. <laughs> Love it. We'd like to thank you for listening and leave everybody with a bit of hail in philosophy. Remember, never put off until tomorrow, which you can do today, because if you like it, well, you'll always do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Lovely talk to you, Savior. The, uh, our next artist is uh, a man with a unique talent of being able to conjure the complex dialects of the black country and to produce from it some very beautiful words. See what I mean, ladies and gentlemen, as I introduce to you now the bard of the black country, Harry Harrison. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You don't take too much notice of him, you know. Right, lad, he's gaffer to Robin Hood at Quarry Bunk. He used to be work for the council, you know. But he went round telling folks he was a pathologist. He actually put bloody slabs down for him. <laughs> <laughs> Till we went to Canada, he used to think a barbecue was a line of blokes waiting for air cut. <laughs> Absolutely right, but it's great, great to be here. I'm from Tipping with the Tomcats go about in pairs. Now, I was born Bloomfield Road, little chap next door to we. He got a dog, kept barking, barked next door, couldn't sleep, waking nights. Sit him in the Prince of Wales, he said, I'll stop him barking, mate. He says, yeah, well, he says, yes. He said, what are you going to do? He says, I'll take him up the bruise and put his tail in the mangle. He said, that will stop him barking. He said, well, by the time his bloody head goes through. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. But what a change now going now, talking about dollars. And I was down there the other week in the great big supermarket there. Though they go the game now, the difference with old fashioned chappy. You go in there, you want shin pads and protectors on. Round the supermarket on a Friday night, there's dodging games left and right. That's when most folks do the shopping with the trolleys, what can catch you napping. There's lots of pushers, as you know. They love to gear a body blow, they ought to be made to take a test. Like the lorry, scores and all the rest, the middle-aged women, I'm the worst. Make manoeuvres, you co trust. <laughs> Lightning stops and the sudden sways, makes we all a bag of nerves. Protect yourself if you can, you want to put some shin pads on. Questions there, MP should ask it for L plates on the big wire basket. These supermarkets, them like motorways, with a need for speed on shopping days, like fairground dodgems off they take, one big race to the payout check, and often cause a bottleneck scattering the stuff all on the deck. Us ones come the wrong way round. It's there, our kid. The old better pound. If only the folks could see the faces when them on these shopping races. It's better than the pantomime, I should say, any time. Yo, go and follow the trolley trail. The spills and thrills, just go fail. But beware the speeders, they're a pest. And they ought to take a bloody test. Thank you. <laughs> the folklore and the legend of the black country has been captured in words and music by our next artist. A black country man by adoption, from Wales originally, but as much a part of the black country now as the castle that stands in Dudley around which the black country grew. Ladies and gentlemen, John Raven.
Actually, have you ever had that feeling, fellas, I'm talking to you now, that feeling you'd like to get rid of the wife when you wake up one morning? Now, in the good old days, you had three alternatives. Brick round the neck and into the canal, which of course was illegal, still is, I believe. You could have packed your own bags and made your way down to the big city of London. There, you would have gone along to the Houses of Parliament. In the Houses of Parliament, you would have paid the man behind the desk the equivalent of about 80 to 90,000 pounds, and you would have bought yourself a special act of Parliament to get a divorce. If you were one of the few who couldn't afford this, you took the third way out. Now, the third way was most interesting. It was cheaper, quicker, more efficient. And that was to take your wife down to the local market and there to sell her in open auction, as you would sell any kind of livestock. Wife for sale, or bandy leg let. You've got to imagine you're in Bilston and the year 1827. This is to give notice that bandy leg let will sell his wife sow for what he can get. At twelve in the morning the sale will begin. So all you young fellas, be there with your tin. And it's ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh ah oh ah Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, all together. It's ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh ah oh ah Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, that's good. Well, Sally's good looking, high and sound as a bell. If you'd only want soda, you'd know that right well. A bake spread quite handy, but eats it all up. Brews beer like a good'un, but drinks every sup. And it's ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh, ah, oh, ah. Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, and again. It's ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh, ah, oh, ah. Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong. Well, who wears men's breeches? So all the folks say. But let's shouldn't have let her have all the round away. Her swears like a trooper, her fights like a cock. Her skin around fella, just many a hard knock. And it's ding a dong, ding a dong, oh ah, oh ah. Ding a dong, ding a dong. Singing ding a dong, ding a dong, oh ah, oh ah. Ding a dong, ding a dong. So all you young fellas, as wanting a wife, come and bid for old Sal, the plague of Let's Life. At twelve o'clock certain, the sale will begin. So yowers once slicing, be there with your tin. And it's ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh, ah, oh, ah. Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong. One more time. Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong, oh, ah, oh, ah. Ding-a-dong, ding-a-dong. I do say in show business, the hardest job in the world is for a stand-up comic to come out and stand in front of an audience and make them laugh. And there are legions of stand-up comedians, but how often do you find a stand-up comedian? We have the finest stand-up comedian in the black country. The queen of black country comedy, ladies and gentlemen, Dolly Allen. Oh, my lovers. <laughs> I just went through the churchyard and I met the caretaker. I said, could you tell me where the inventor of crossword puzzles is buried? He says, 10 down, 15 across. <laughs> I went and found the grave. Brand new gravestone, all white. When I see one of them, no matter who it belongs to, if it's a new one, I like to see which is what's under. So I read the name, and I thought, well, I know who that bloke is under there, because I always know his wife. I used to call her Bandit Lil, because she used to put the tanners in the one arm bandits that fast her. I had to spit on the handle to cool it down. <laughs> and it was her man, and I just got his name on and rest in peace. When they read the will out and I found out he hadn't left her anything, I went straight after the gravestone, man. Was I know the three words put on there? If I'd have known as much as I know now, you wouldn't have that new gravestone. I said him cremated, and his ashes for a neck timer. 
who says he's never done a day's work for me in his life, so I sit and watch him work. <laughs> so I had three more words put on the gravestone, and now it reads, Rest in peace till I come. <laughs> Come out the churchyard, I was walking down the road, and there was a bloke got us and caught on the side of the road, and I don't see many of them today, and he was trying to put one of them feed bags over us's head. And there was a bloke on the other side of the road watching him, and this bloke walks over to him with us, and he says, you'll never do it. He's never do that. And the bloke says, do what? He says, you'll never get that oss in that bed. <laughs> I went walking on past Oxfam Shep because I got a sail on. <laughs> so I went and had a look round to encourage him. <laughs> and I bought a rig out. Pound over ten shilling. <laughs> and I got a pair of men's working boots in the window. I said, how much of the working boots? This is five shilling. I said, good man, I'll take them home. They might ask me mom to go to work. <laughs> when I took them back home, he tried them on now, just his feet. He said, the leather's a bit hard, though. I think I'll put them in the oven and sapping them a bit. <laughs> oh, he put them in the oven. When he got them out, they were shriveled. He couldn't stir them on his feet. I said, you and your brilliant ideas. What are you going to do with them? He said, I think I'll advertise them for a pair of riding boots. <laughs> so he put advert in somebody's window. And the next day, we had a bloke come. He said, I think you've got a pair of riding boots for sale. He showed him him. He said, they're not riding boots. Nothing like riding boots. My mum says, if they yet ride in boots, you'll try walking in them. <laughs> I come out there and I was walking up the town and I passed the photograph shop. And I got some lovely photos in the window. I thought I should love mine at the side of them. So I went in. I said, now I want you to make me as glamorous as you can. Because I want to get on page three. <laughs> he says, leave it to me. So he took me all shapes to get the best profile. After he took the photo, he said, would you like it mounted? I said, yes, I'll have it mounted. He's never seen me on horseback before. <laughs> when I showed my mum the photo, he says, you know, we should be a good looking couple if it weren't for you. <laughs> I put his tie down on the table, and he looked at it. He said, what was it, the fire cooked it? <laughs> Just the same, and I made him a pond cake. He says, who helped you to lift it out the pond? <laughs> As you can have egg if you like. Would you like it boiled or strangled? <laughs> or you can have another course. No doubt many have the choice of three courses on the labour. <laughs> You can have fish and chips. Oh, he says, now that's so much like. We had none of them a good while. I says, right. So we went across the fish shop, and the bloke has served me war there. <laughs> I said, where's Harold tonight? The gaffer says, I've sacked him. I said, what for? He said, for messing about with a tater chipper. I said, has he damaged it? He said, I don't know. I've sacked her and all. <laughs> Then a knock come to the door. When I opened it, it was one of these here salesmen. And before I could ask him what he wanted, he tipped a bag of dirt on me floor. I says, hey, what have you done that for? He said, missus, I've got something to show you you've never seen before. He said, I've got electroclux. Electroclux sweeper. 
and I want to demonstrate it. And it will soak that dirt up in two seconds. If it doesn't, I'll eat it. I says, right, here's a spoon, you can start now, because i got no electric. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with a song. I go sing. <laughs> you need hands to hold someone you care for. You need hands to show that you're sincere. When you feel nobody wants to know you, you need hands to brush away the tears when you hold a brand new baby you need tender hands to guide them on their way you need hands to thank the Lord for living and for giving us this day. Our next artist started uh, very humble beginnings in the, as many fellows with a guitar did taking his guitar around the clubs and the pubs in the black country until he was roped into the black country night out show right at the very outset and really made a name for himself not only on the folk scene but also with black country audiences everywhere from a little place called downtown netherton ladies and gentlemen brian cliffs <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's for the people from Worcester. <laughs> from y'all up from the black country, I've been here. <laughs> uh, oh, what a lovely audience. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't see you. Good evening, Charles. <laughs> it's Charlie Davis from Quarrybunk. <laughs> I'm from Netherton, as Ray said, and like most black country folks, one thing we all love to do is reminisce. We always talk about the good old days. Good old days, they were probably very bad days, really, in a lot of ways, but we gained a lot of things for, uh, from them days. Medicine to the sort of people we are today, when our grandparents and parents went through the very hard times in the black country, uh, living in the very tightly knit communities, where everybody had to get on well together. They lived so closely, they had to get on. And from that sprung this uh, sort of uh, community spirit that I think is hard to beat anywhere. And uh, in that community spirit, we had one or two kingpins, one or two good neighbours, when well, we all had good neighbours, but one or two seemed to be able to do any sort of job. This is one song about one lady who was very dear to me, so it's a personal reminiscence. You can probably relate it to a lot of people, you know, in the black country. There may even be people here tonight who remember the sort of jobs that these good neighbours were asked to do. This song just tells a few of them. The lady in question was my old grand. Her was the salt of the earth, so folks used to say, and you'd know it was true if you'd come from down our way, cause wherever they lived, up the street or in the fold, everyone knew her, both the young and and old. And when things just day go according to plan, they knew they'd get help from my old gran. Cause her was one of the old sort, her had a heart of gold and brought up we kids just to do what we was told an old-fashioned neighbor and a jack of all trades 
And I won't forget her Though their memories fade Cause her was good to them all Both women and men And I won't forget her Not my old grand when some wench down the street Her babby was due They'd say go and fetch Polly Cause her know what to do Her'd get hot water and towels And send the other kids out And in no time at all You heard that babby's for shout Heard say there you been, Lizzie, it's a sister for your pran, and I think we shall rear her, says my old gran. And a top pick in time, they'd say who's going this year, put Paul's name down for one. Cos you know is always there Then away to the country Women, children, dogs and all And out Paul would be there At our beck and call And at night in the barn Round the fire we kids would stand Listening to stories from my old grand But when I look around today Now time's taken its toll I ask where am they now Them folks like old Paul Cause her looked after her own and helped other folks as well If there was more like her today Then this old world would be swell Cause her could be Oh so gentle Or as strong as any man Her was the salt of the earth Was my old grand and thou has been gone a long time, I know I never can forget that dear lady who was my old grand. Temporary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary to the sweetest girl I know. Oh, goodbye, Piccadilly, farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary, but my You're in the box, do the best you can. 
<laughs> he needs no introduction. You don't need me to tell you that he's a very, very funny man. All the way from Hale Zoe, and he was here on time. <laughs>
just been published, especially for the heart of Erie. You can buy two fast fifty on Ghost and Market entitled Help! <laughs> now, during the recession, ladies and gentlemen, I've been, in, I've been including a situation vacant spot. So, if anybody here tonight interested in a career in catering, apparently cooks are required. Maximum height, four foot two inches, apply, little chef. <laughs> <laughs> right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little bit excited, Dad. I must admit, because, you see, I'm sort of retiring from a usual job. I've been retiring on March 27th. But, I shall still be under the umbrella of the Dudley Metropolitan Borough because I've landed this job in the latest sort of that's in our town. <laughs> that's absolutely true. In my duty, uh, boys, I have to nip into the latest sort of periodically, which means every now and again, right? <laughs> With a jug of water which makes all the steam, and immediately after the sort of session, I have to give all the ladies a massage. <laughs> Front and rear. <laughs> Would you believe 350 pounds a week? Yes, I think I can afford it. <laughs> and the other thing I'm excited about, I've just completed two new videos which I'd like to look out for. They'll be out during the month of April. You can buy them at Merry Hill. Now, the first one is all about an amateur ventriloquist entitled Gollops. <laughs> Tales of the Unexpected, and that's all about a black boy you love around the rich. <laughs> yes, I think 1992 is going to be a better year for me, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure it is. Because last year was a disaster for me last year. 1991, I hated it here. And it all started right at the very beginning of the year in the January. I said to my wife, I said, now darling, but I called her darling, I can never remember what her name is. <laughs> I said, now darling, I said, I'm going to take you to the pictures tonight. We're going to Merry Hill, we're going to see Dancing with Wolves at Merry Hill. Now that sounds almost enough, darling. Right? So off we went to Merry Hill. Now, I don't know whether you've been to the pictures recently, ladies and gentlemen, but you're going. And you'll sit down, you'll have half an hour of adverts, don't you? Then they tell you what's coming on for the next 25 bloody years, right? <laughs> The lights go up with the interval, and you'll see nothing and nothing. <laughs> well, we wanted to suck all through these bloody adverts from toothpaste to pencil, and eventually the lights went up with the interval. Well, there was a bloke sitting next to me, and he got up and he trod right on my bloody foot. <laughs> and I heard the old box, I squeal the bloody palace. Down. <laughs> this bloke never apologised, he smelled back nothing. <laughs> well, I thought he'd got him his bloody foot, I ain't that for sure. And I had a mess on me big towel to get the blood back. I thought, would you mind I got my mess on? I thought, Christ. <laughs> anyway, eventually this bloke come back and he got a bucket of popcorn. Now, I ain't kidding you, I'm going to wash your bloody feet in this bucket. <laughs> and this popcorn must have cost him 100,000 bloody pounds and a great big popcorn. <laughs> And I thought, well, if he ain't that, God bless his bloody mind. I thought, <laughs> now I did come over to me towards me. I thought, he's a puppet. And he says, uh, hey, mate, did I turn your foot? I says, you bloody well did you walk a piece of furniture. <laughs> oh, he's having the right road there. And he said, I'm the right road. Now, Tom, he said, I'd like to present you, he said, with this watch. He said, 
in recognition of your 25 years service to the bottom. So I just watch up in my winding door, I shook it. <laughs> Not a bloody dick out there. <laughs> That's what the bloody thing don't work, you won't know your way for that 25 years. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm fed up and keep having all these insults. Because my, but my daughter had her on back in the other day. I was at school the other day and there was these two chaps in a bragging about the pay of theirs. Saying how fast they was. And this one of the chaps said, Richie, oh, how old chap is he? That fast, he says, he'll fire an arrow in a target, he says. And he'll catch it in his mouth, don't get the target. And those people laugh, chap, old oh, chap, don't have the rifle, so they don't know things. He'd carry along with it, taking all his insults. I said, my father can beat that on board council. He works for the council. He don't finish work at half past four. He's up at three o'clock. <laughs> so that's why I'm getting out. But the ultimate last year, getting back to 1991, the ultimate was in the May, and me and Val went to Blackpool for a couple of days. Right. And we was walking down the Golden Mile, and I said to Val, I said, Val, I'm going to have my fortune told. I said, never know what's around the corner. I said, I'm good. So we get to this tender fair thing, and we walk in, and this gypsy woman is sitting there, grabbing the bloody earrings and a bit turban on. And I said, straight up, I said, I ain't in your box, I'd be a fright of everybody here. And I can feel her eyes piercing straight through me. She said, I'm going to tell you straight away, Mr. Mullins, she said, and he didn't know me, there. <laughs> I said, I'm going to tell you straight away, Mr. Mullins, you'll have no more children. <laughs> And just then the crystal ball rolled off the table and cut me that girl. And I got to see the back of 1991. I'm sorry to come on and tell her all this, but you're going to tell somebody, you're cooking pot from the door. Because he normally, when a black country comes back to the States, normally, you see, he'll, he'll talk about the good old days. He'll say, I'm going to be a lot of reminisce, and that's what it's all about tonight. Look at it back in the old days. But you know, it suddenly struck me one day, you know, I thought, well, the way, the way the time keeps whipping by, probably very long before our kids will be coming in out of the ground. Because they'll be having a nice life, this, I don't know, but probably, and they'll be reminiscing. But they'll be talking about the 90s now, can you imagine what our kids will be saying about the 90s? They'll be saying, remember the days in the 90s, how cute, eh? You have to look up the yellow pages, you have to order a taxi, take it to the theatre, you have to see a show, you have to come out of the theatre, the taxi's still be waiting for you. Take it to a restaurant, you have a lovely meal, come out of the restaurant, the taxi's still near the same driver, he brings you back home straight to the door, and you have to still get two pence change out of 400 quid. <laughs> I probably think I don't remember the old days, but I can remember them. <laughs> I'll shock you later. I can remember when going jumpers on the beach meant you had a great chief on your head. <laughs> I can remember my granddad riding a penny farthing bike, and of course we went desperate and couldn't get spare bike for him. <laughs> but whenever I reminisce the first one, I always think about his mother, and I was mother to give me a good idea, or a cog angry, they say now, don't they? Back up the money, you know. You say, Tommy, why do you be a good lad? I say, Mother, I'll be good for a shilling. And you say, Well, why do you be good for nothing like your father? <laughs> <laughs> My poor dad, when I think about him, folks, well, if I'm trying to think it's bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you someone, you had a kid to transplant up a bit, wasn't <laughs> He broke his arm and the ears and nose and throat lost his life. A bounty went in there to have his tonsils out and somebody turned the bloody table around. <laughs> I don't think they want me. I don't think they want me. Janet said, we train 
Jack's funny little fellow with the tractor at a crossroad, you know. Now, <laughs> <laughs> mention it, what does she? She don't dad, one of my ambitions, I'd like to get shot into space. So I'll tell you this time, if I'd be one of them, picky, I would have been here. <laughs> <laughs> And see the little old house where I was born now, 13, Chapel Street, Owls Owen, and it was detached. I'm not supposed to detach it, but I'm coming away from the rest of the money. <laughs> 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 there was two bedrooms, Bob Bowen and Dad, Bob Russell and Kit. <laughs> and I found it very embarrassing, brothers and sisters, 14 and 15, changing in the same bedroom. Of course, we got the situation where the council sent an health inspector around. When he clapped eyes on my sister, he moved in with us today. <laughs> I used to sleep with five of my brothers, there were six in one bed, and four of them used to fiddle the bed every night. <laughs> the bed was bloody ringed. We had the first water bed, really, that bloody ringed. <laughs> I slept the rubbing when I was five. <laughs> we used to have a bloody rainbow over the bed. <laughs> Loads of albums, written, scores of books. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the very special talent of John Raven. Well, there's many a task for the English folk in a man's a man away who delves the coals and the iron ore, iron shapes the potter's clay. For this is the song of the Staffordshire man in forge and kiln in mine. Our fire shall burn, a mill will stern, and the knot will be our sign. Well, there are forty shires that light their fires, I am blessed the iron strong. And the china bake, the potters make, as they sing the Stafford song. Over oh, this is the song of the Staffordshire man, in forge, in kiln, in mine. Our fire shall burn, our mill wheels turn, and the knot will be our sign. Well, we come of a race of young men bold, whose drink is the best of beer, and our fields feed beast for the Christmas feast. You may share our Staffordshire cheer, singing this is the song of the Staffordshire man, in forge, in kiln, in mine. Our fire shall burn, our mill wheels turn, and the knot will be a sign. Oh, we'll marshal our ranks on the grey pit banks, our lads on the football fields. If the cause be right, then we're game for the fight. We never were known to yield. Over this is the song of the Staffordshire man, in forge, in kiln, in mine. Our fire shall burn, our mill will stern, and the knot will be our sign. Stop you. Song of the Staffordshire man. Talking about the Staffordshire man. Um, brings me on to my theme for the night for one thing, and also reminds me of my early days with Doug Parker back in the early 80s when we first met, and he, he sort of got involved in a folk club that I was involved with myself. He was telling me all about his hard times, the difficult parts of his life, and what had gone wrong and so forth. He told me that seven months before he'd been out of work for about a year, and he said that one day towards the end of the year he was walking along the canal bank at the back of his house down in Wolverhampton here, 
worrying of course about where the cash was going to come from, the clothes, the food, the rates, all the things you have to keep on finding no matter what. And so you got to a bend in the canal and those splashing and shouting while the kids are playing about in the water. Got around the bend and there, right out in the very middle of the canal, this bloke was waving his arms and shouting, help, help, get me out of the drowning. And Doug told me that he turned himself right around, ran back along the canal bank, up the little bridge, along the road for two, three hundred yards, gets to a pair of factory gates, top speed across the yard to the door mark, foreman, Doug crashes in through the door. <coughs> Just seen Jack Willits drowning in the canal, he said, can I have his job? Turn in some injury, the former said to him, I'm sorry, don't, but I'll just give it to the bloke while I pushed him in. <laughs> That's the Actually, I've chosen tonight, unusually perhaps, uh, for a grand theatre performance, to sing a bunch of songs about the canals. I'm taking a particular theme tonight. It's not as, not as bad as it may seem, though. There are light moments, so to speak. But the canals were fantastically important to the black country, of course. And without those canals, we wouldn't have developed in the way that we did. And the first song is really almost the end of the story, because it was written only about 30 years ago by a bloke called Pete Dodds. And the character on, in the song is an old canal boat, and he's had to leave the canals because of the hard times. But in his mind's eye, he dreams that he finds an old boat, the Rosemary, makes a deal with the owner, refurbishes the boat, paints it up, repairs the Bolinda engine, which in fact is a Swedish diesel engine, and sails down the canals once again, carrying coal from the black country to Birmingham, Coventry, and beyond. Of course, by the time this character was about, the canals had fallen into virtual disuse. In fact, the uh, railways in the sort of mid-19th century were a great blow into this century. The vans and lorries on the roads were even more of a problem. And then, of course, the great freeze up of 47, 48 meant that people couldn't use the canals for about six to eight weeks, and those who did uh, use them at the time had to transfer over to the roads and the railways, and they never really returned their custom to the canals, and that's why this song raised its head in terms of lack of use after sort of 47, 48. And I can remember as a sort of uh, youngster around about that time down in the old Staffordshire Canal, remembering that suddenly all the canal boats seemed to disappear and I wondered why and then of course later on in life when I looked into it I found out. Rosemary. Nice chorus. Foldy roll, foldy rider. Sing foldy roll days. The song we're all singing. Down Bromwich and Way. Try when you get to it. Got up in the 
morning before it was light. Put the rusty blow lamp on the cylinder head. It's a fine day for boating, the old boatsman has said. And he's primed up the engine, a prayer in his heart. Kicked on the flywheel to see if she'd start. With a bang like the sound of a ten pound a gun, all oh, the aged old ballin' that started to run. All the raw, all the right on, all the wrong day, it's the song they're all singing down from a young way. He's cast off the fore end of the counter he stood. At the rosemary shook herself free of the mud. With a tear in his eye, says the boatsman, we may get right down to Coventry for the end of the day. nights round the fall of the year. If the beat of a ball in the distance you hear, it's not plate and sour that you may all the day. It's the ghost of that boatsman and the old rosemary. song called The Bold Navvies, going right back to the beginning of the old canals. And these characters were very, very heavy people indeed a lot of the time. They were away from their families, of course, and they come over, uh, a lot of people came from Ireland to join up with the navvies because, of course, they were short of work there in the 1780s and 1770s, and they came across in their droves and joined the bands of the navvies who roamed around the countryside following the, the engineers who built the canals, and they lived a very rough life away from children, away from wives and families, and there was a lot of problems in the towns and villages, uh, all sorts of um, crime used to take place, and competitive sports between the residents and the navvies, like fighting and cutting throats and what have you. So they were a pretty tough bunch, lived a very hard life. This is a little song from the navvies of the Black Country Canals in the 70s. choose his own tool. He that comes first may choose of the best. He who comes last may take all the rest. For that's the rule of the bold navigators. For we are jovial banksmen all. And on Tuesday morning when we go to work, we'll strip off our jackets, we'll tighten our shirts. We'll strip off our jackets, we'll let them out free. We'll drive our poles by one, two, and three. For that's the rule of the bold navigators. For we are jovial banksmen all. And it's when that we come to the bottommost run. We'll lower our hands and then it's begun. We'll lower our hands and hold fast on our wheels. Well, the barrow will go if you don't hold it still. For that's the rule of the bold navigators. For we are jovial banksmen all. And it's when that we come to the main flank wheel. We'll fill up the barrow right up to the top. We'll fill up the barrow and pile it right high. But if you don't wheel it, another will try. For that's the rule of the bold 
navigators, for we are jovial banksmen all. And when that we come to heavy frost or snow, we'll blow up our mess and off we will glow. We into a hail house, we'll take it right then. We don't give a damn whether we work or no, for that's the rule of the bold navigators, for we are jovial banksmen all. When that it does begin for to rain, we'll pile up our barrows and all gang in, and into the ale houses we'll go. Whiskey we'll drink, and no man can say no, for that's the rule of the bold navigators, for we are jovial banksmen all. Yes, that's the rule of the bold navigators, for we are jovial banksmen all. As soon as, of course, the, uh, the canals are finished, the engineers have uh, done their trick and the canal navvies have done their bit as well, the Great Canal Celebration would take place, and there were hundreds of these all over the country as canals opened in the 70s, 70s and 80s. And one uh, just down the road from us in the Black Country, when the Birmingham Canal Navigation opened up, which of course included the Black Country Canal, a uh, chap called John Freeth, who was a great balladeer at the time, wrote a song called Birmingham Lads, and it celebrated the opening of the Birmingham Black Country Canal. And these gong goozles, as they call them, because thousands sort of assembled to watch the celebrations, uh, were a feature of the century, so to speak. And they had some garlands and bands and choirs and boats be ribboned and bedecked with flags and what have you. And the great openings took place. John Freeth, uh, alas and alack, who was a, in fact a Birmingham coffee house owner and pub owner, eventually died in the poorhouse. He was so busy writing songs he couldn't run his business properly. This is one of his songs from the 70s. This day for our new navigation We'll banish all cares and vexation The sight of the barges Each honest heart lads And the merriest of mortals Are Birmingham lads Birmingham lads Jovial ain't all the merriest of mortals are Birmingham lads. Oh, with pride every heart must be glowing, stout presses and lathes will be going. The lads to the wall with their lasses repair, smile at the streamers that play in the air. Around the gates 
and they hope so. And then he comes out on the London road. Oh, poor old folks. He'll work all night and he'll work all day. And they say so, and they hope so. Put him on the inside, he will back her away. Oh, poor old horse. From Atherston to the heart she'll end, and they say so, and they hope so. T'was there that poor beast broke his string. Oh, poor old horse. And after years of such abuse, and they say so, and they hope so, you're assaulted down for sailors' use. Oh, poor old horse. Yes, a number one come a banker and buy, and they say so, and they hope so. We said, oh, mama, that horse will die. Oh, poor old horse. Poor old horse. <laughs> Finish off this little sort of brief deco into the canals, as it were, with a song that some folks may remember. It was uh, about 30 odd years ago, a, a group set itself up in, in the Dudley area because they were going to, the, the railway were going to close down the, the uh, Dudley Canal. And of course, when you try and close anything in this country, as soon as you do it, a group gets together to try and save it. And this group, in fact, was called the Dudley Canal Tunnel Preservation Society. And one of the, one of the memorable things they did, apart from actually saving the, <coughs> from extinction, and it now, of course, is open, and is part of the Black Country Museum, they also wrote a song called Push, 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 and this is it. It's going to be easier. Push, 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 push.
no finer way to introduce him perhaps than to read you a very brief passage of classic black country humour. Because I think the books, black country humour is also classic. This is taken originally from a book called Black Country Nurse at Large, written by Edith Cottrell. And she travelled the black country as a nurse. And one of the ladies she had to go and visit regularly was a lady who in the book is called Mrs. Tibbs. And she was one of those folks for whom absolutely nothing could ever be done right. And on this occasion, the nurse knocks at the door, the door opens up, and there stands Mrs. Tibbs holding a saucer in her hand and resting in a solitary state in the very middle of the saucer, one single and very lonely pea. And this is a famous episode of Mrs. Tibbs and her pea. Via, Mrs. Tibbs indicated it triumphantly. Get you to that? Costa, I bet you I'll call. Tentatively, I squeezed the pea between thumb and forefinger and agreed it was like a bibble. Rather hard, but she was not to be put off with that. Don't ever another, she bellowed. You haven't got teeth what I have, you haven't tried biting it. <coughs> Nothing less would satisfy her, and I had no time for gameting, so gingerly I bit hard on the offending pea, which immediately shot across the room. There, she rejoiced, hugging herself. You haven't caught eighty, can you? And what's more, it's been through me once. <laughs> Tipperary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Oh, goodbye, Piccadilly, farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary, but Tipperary to the sweetest girl.